more about your creator, we have this all packed and ready for you. So, here we here go! of John chapter 14 verse 6. It says, Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Who is the Father in this situation? Did you say God? I hope you did because that would be the correct answer. Would you say the memory verse with me? Here we go. Jesus answered, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. It's game time! Hey kids, it's game time! We're gonna do something super fun today as we learn about earthquakes. There's a story in the Bible that's really gonna shake us up. So we're gonna do a true or false contest. I wanna see how many of you know all there is to know about earthquakes. All right, are you ready for this? I want you to, like, maybe you could have somebody in the room that you can compete against, keep score, and see which ones you get right and which ones you get wrong. This is all true or false. So if you think this answer is true, I want you to stand up to your feet. If you think it's false, I need you to sit down, okay? Are you ready for this? There is such thing as earthquake weather. There is such a thing as earthquake weather. If you think it's true, stand up. If you think it's false, sit down. It's false! There's all sorts of weather that happens during earthquakes. So did you get that one right? Did you get that one wrong? Let's see, keep track. Here we go, question number two. The magnitude of an earthquake is the same thing as its intensity. The magnitude is the same thing as its intensity. It's false! Magnitude measures energy release at the earthquake source be below the surface. Intensity is the shaking on the top of the ground. All right, here we go. That's question number two. Here's question number three. The hypocenter is the place where the earthquake begins under the surface of the earth. The hypocenter is the place where the earthquake begins under the surface of the earth. Hmm, if that's true, stand up. If that's false, sit down. Hmm, what do you think? It's true. The hypocenter is the place where the, the earth moves under the surface. The epicenter is when it moves on the top of the surface. Ooh, these are getting tough. Hope you're getting these right. Here we go. Question number four. Earthquakes cause tidal waves. Earthquakes cause tidal waves. Hmm, is that true? Is that false? It's kind of a trick question because earthquakes cause tsunamis. Tsunamis used to be called tidal waves. So if you say earthquakes cause tidal waves, then and tidal waves aren't around, then yeah, that's false because they're actually called tsunamis, but they're not called tsunamis, they're called earthquakes, and, and we could just keep going on and on, whether it's true or false, or true or false, or true or false, or tra true, tross, or fru, or something. Question number five. The largest recorded earthquake in the United States was in San Francisco, California. Hmm, was it in California? The answer is false. The largest earthquake in the United States happened in Alaska. In 1964, it was registered as a 9.2 on the Richter scale. Fun fact. Wow, that was a lot of information about earthquakes. I hope you learned something, maybe shook up your brain a little bit. That really registered on the Richter scale. I don't know, I got a lot of earthquake jokes, but I hope you had fun. I th hope that we can learn about how Paul experienced an earthquake today.
God delivers. What does that mean? Is it like when we order a pizza and 30 minutes later a guy delivers it to our door? God does deliver, but not exactly like a pizza guy. Sometimes people treat God like a delivery guy who's just taking their order. And while God does hear all of our requests, His plan to deliver us means so much more than giving us what we want. It means He will give us freedom. He will deliver us from our fears and enemies, and most of all, from being separated from Him. Well, that sounds better than a pizza. It sure is. Actually, where we left off in the big God story is a great place to look and see how God delivers. Remember where we were in Antioch? Antioch is the church mentioned in the book of Acts. A lot of firsts happened there. The first time the believers of Jesus were called Christians and the place that God sent his first missionaries, like Paul. Yes, I remember that Paul and Silas <clears throat> were traveling all over telling people about the big God story. Where did they go after Antioch? To a town called Philippi, which is a modern day Greece. In Philippi, God delivered people in different circumstances, all in amazing ways. So God delivered them by bringing them freedom? Yes, and they all needed freedom in different ways. They met a girl who was influenced by the enemy. She was a slave girl who earned a great deal of money for her owners by fortune telling. A fortune teller is someone who claims to be able to predict another person's future. So really it was the girl that needed to be delivered. That's right. God delivered the girl from the influence of the enemy and she was free. It was amazing. Wow, she must have been so happy. She was. But the men who made money from her fortune telling were very angry with Paul because now they couldn't make money from her. So they accused Paul and Silas of breaking the law. So what happened next? Well, because Paul and Silas were accused of breaking the law, some men came and grabbed them. They got Paul and Silas in trouble with the rulers of the town. When the judges heard this, they ordered the guards to throw Paul and Silas into jail. Why were they thrown into jail? Did they do anything wrong? No, but still the men wanted them to be put in jail. The men were so upset that they took their clothes, beat them, and threw them into prison. Roman prisons were dark and smelly and probably pretty frightening. The men were so angry at Paul and Silas that they had them taken into the very deepest part of the prison and locked their hands and feet to the wall. Okay, they really needed God to deliver them. That's true. Paul and Silas prayed to God from prison, and even though they were probably scared, they worshiped God in the midst of uncertainty. In fact, they praised God so loudly that the other prisoners around them began to wake up in the night and listen as they prayed and sang. Wow, it's like God delivered their hearts, even while their bodies were still in prison. Now you're onto something. See, God can do amazing things in our hearts when we choose to trust and praise Him even when things are scary or uncertain. God first delivered Paul and Silas from fear. He makes their hearts free even while they are still in chains. But then, then God did even more. God sent a large earthquake. Earthquakes? Oh no, those are scary, especially if you're in a prison. This was a big, strong earthquake, and you're right, they were probably scared. But the prison stayed safe, except for one part. The doors broke and the chains came loose. So after God delivered their hearts from fear, He delivered a way to escape. They actually didn't choose to escape. Wait, what? Why not? I don't know why they didn't run out of the prison, but I do know how God used it. See, there is still one more person that God needed to deliver. Who? The jailer. When he woke up and saw all the doors were open, he was sure that all the prisoners had escaped. He was so sure of it that he drew his sword to kill himself because his job was to keep them in prison. But Paul shouted out in the dark, don't hurt yourself, we're all still here. The jailer couldn't believe it. I can't either. He called for all his guards to bring in torches and went down into the prison where he found Paul and Silas. The jailer fell to his knees and knew that the God these men worshipped must indeed be the one true God. He asked them, what must I do to be saved? Paul told him, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved, you and your family. The jailer and his entire family put their faith in Jesus and got baptized that very night. God delivered the jailer and his family from a life of worshipping false gods. And for everyone that believes in Jesus Christ, God promises to deliver their hearts too. And God delivers us into freedom of a life with Him and His children. This is so exciting! That's exactly why Paul and Silas went out as missionaries, to tell people that God delivers. That's right. In this part of the Big God story, we saw several examples of how God delivers. And God's big story isn't done yet. God delivers people every day, 
all over the world when they place their faith in him. But not like a pizza. No, not like a pizza. When we say God delivers, it doesn't always mean we get what we ask for, but it does mean we always get freedom from anything that separates us from him. And that's way better than a pizza. Yeah, that's way better than a pizza. In the account of Paul and Silas at Philippi, we saw different ways how God delivered. God delivered the, the little girl from the powers of the enemy. God delivered Paul and Silas from prison. God delivered the jailer and his family. God does incredible things. And you know, to be delivered means to be set free, to be rescued, to be redeemed. And that's what God does. God saves us. God frees us. He rescues us. He is our savior. You may hear this word used multiple times when we talk about Jesus as our savior because that's what he does when he delivers us. I pray today that your heart and your mind would be open to receive Jesus as your savior, to deliver you from sin or temptation or anything that might be holding you back from going deeper in your relationship with Jesus. All right, well, it's time for questions. We want to know how much you paid attention and learned from today's story. Here we go, question number one. Question number one. Why, did, why were Paul and Silas put in jail? Question number two. What did Paul and Silas do while they were in jail? Question number three. What does the word deliver mean? Question number four. How did God deliver Paul and Silas? Can I bless you today? Will you put your hands out like this so I can bless you? May you find rest and refuge in God Almighty. May he deliver you and keep you safe. Can I pray with you today? Father, thank you so much for our new life kiddos. I pray that they have a deeper understanding of how much you love them and how much you are there for them, even when they might make bad mistakes. God, you were there to deliver us, to accept us back, and to help us along the way. So Father, we love you and we thank you in Jesus' name, amen. New life kids, we love you so much. And I'm so thankful that you are taking the time to watch these lessons to learn more about God and how much he loves you. We love you and we hope that you have a fantastic week. We will see you right back here next Sunday. Bye-bye.